water. Our history, our future, our economic destiny are intimately linked to the use, control, and conservation of this vital resource. We rely on it every day for electric power, water supply, navigation, fish and wildlife, irrigation, and recreation. Much of the water we have available in the southwestern region comes from rainfall. But through the years, we've learned that we can't always predict what nature will hand us. Sometimes there's too much water. Sometimes there's not enough. Countless lives have been lost. Property has been damaged and destroyed. And people have been uprooted from their homes, all because of the extremes of weather in the southwestern region. In the spring of 1927, one of the worst floods in our nation's history occurred when the waters of the Mississippi and other rivers overflowed the levees designed to hold them back. The floodwaters cut a devastating path through seven states, killing more than 500 people. Another 700,000 were displaced from their homes and nearly 26,000 square miles were inundated with floodwaters. In response to the disaster, Congress passed the Flood Control Act of 1927, which provided federal funding for flood control on all tributary streams of the Mississippi River system subject to destructive floods. Included in the act were the tributaries and main channels of the White, Arkansas, and Red Rivers. Subsequent legislation in 1936 and 1938 expanded the federal government's role in flood control and authorized the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to build reservoirs at specific sites, including Denison Dam on the Red River between Oklahoma and Texas and Norfolk Dam on the White River in Arkansas. Hydropower was included at both projects. In 1943, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt issued an executive order authorizing the Secretary of the Interior to sell the power produced at the Denison and Norfolk dams, as well as the Pensacola Dam on the Grand River in Oklahoma. The Secretary of the Interior in turn created the Southwestern Power Administration and named Douglas Wright as the agency's first administrator. Congress confirmed Southwestern's authorization with the Flood Control Act of 1944. The act mandated the Secretary of the Interior to transmit and dispose of such power and energy in such manner as to encourage the most widespread use thereof at the lowest possible rates to consumers consistent with sound business principles. The act also stipulated that preference in the sale of such power shall be given to public bodies and cooperatives. Subsequent legislation expanded the multipurpose aspect of federal projects to include not only hydropower, flood control, navigation and irrigation, but also recreation and habitat for fish and wildlife. The federal government's entry into the power business was not without opposition. Many believed that federal power would compete with private utilities and that government transmission facilities would duplicate those already available to consumers. But as the need for electricity began to increase in the boom years following World War II, both public and private utilities found themselves scrambling to keep up. A nationwide rural electrification campaign started before the war regained momentum as farmers and other rural residents demanded access to the growing electrical grid. Eventually, the need for dependable, affordable power overcame the resistance of federal power opponents. In the latter half of the 20th century, Congress authorized funding for additional hydropower projects within Southwestern's marketing area. Rural electric cooperatives and smaller municipalities are the usual beneficiaries of federal power. By law, Southwestern must market the power produced at 24 Corps of Engineers multipurpose dams to publicly owned utilities. Southwestern has over 100 such customers in its six-state marketing region.
These preference customers ultimately serve another 7 million end-use customers in Arkansas, Kansas, Louisiana, Missouri, Oklahoma, and Texas. To facilitate the marketing of federal power, Southwestern operates and maintains 1,380 miles of high-voltage transmission lines, 24 substations, and 46 microwave and VHF radio sites from offices in Tulsa and Gore, Oklahoma, Springfield, Missouri, and Jonesboro, Arkansas. Power scheduling and dispatching are handled through a state-of-the-art control center in Springfield. Here, dispatchers monitor Southwestern's generation and transmission system and communicate with the control rooms at the dams to match power output with customer demand. Annual revenues for Southwestern are used to pay the cost of maintaining the generation and transmission facilities of the federal projects and to repay the principal and interest on the federal investment in the hydropower facilities. There are many benefits to hydropower, but one of the most beneficial uses is to meet peak demand. Peak demand occurs when the need for power is at its greatest, usually on hot summer afternoons or cold winter mornings, when customers require greater amounts of electricity for air conditioning and heating. The generation of hydropower begins when water flows from the reservoir through large pipes called penstocks. The water exits the penstocks across the blades of a turbine. As the water pushes against the blades of the turbine, the generator spins and produces electricity. In peak demand times, hydropower is especially valuable to Southwestern's customers because it saves them from purchasing peak power at higher rates or from building additional generating plants to meet the demand. End-use customers benefit too since the cost-based federal power helps keep utility rates low and provides a benchmark for electric power rates across the nation. Other benefits of hydropower include less dependence on fossil fuels and less air pollution, legacies that will certainly benefit future generations. And what will the future hold for Southwestern? To do its part in keeping electricity reliable and abundant within the region, Southwestern will continue working as a member of a regional electrical reliability organization. To meet the needs of an ever-changing utility industry, Southwestern will call upon the commitment and creativity of its workforce to meet and conquer future challenges. To prepare the region for future growth, Southwestern will continue working with its customers and others in the industry so that transmission systems can be interconnected to relieve load constraints and improve reliability. And lastly, to preserve hydropower benefits while making sure that the region's water resources are used for the greatest good, Southwestern will continue to coordinate its operating activities with the many public and private groups who have an interest in the stewardship of this vital resource. The original mission of Southwestern still stands, to market reliable, cost-based federal power. However, in the past few decades, this mission has become more complex. Helping to resolve potential conflicts over competing uses, establishing, maintaining, and planning for regional transmission systems, and helping to make a cleaner environment are all now a part of Southwestern's mission. Whether the mighty force of water is being harnessed to produce hydropower for businesses and homes, or whether it is being used for other equally important purposes, it is essential that the water be used wisely with an eye towards the future. Southwestern remains committed to the best use of water in the region and looks forward to providing dependable, affordable, and environmentally sound hydropower for many years to come.